Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm doing Moon Men in Prismacolor pencils. This is a cute stamp set from Reverse Confetti, and when I saw it I thought I want to do this in pencil because it's got lots of little tiny thin lines and thin details, which I can't get into really with my Copics very well. So I pulled out my hex charts and just looked for some overall colors that I thought I might want to use and trying to decide which group of pencils I wanted to use as well. Sometimes looking at the colors helps me to just make a decision on what I might like to try for this particular one. So I decided on my Prismas. Now what I stamped here is a little crazy. I stamped my flying little moon man there off at an angle. I stamped this, there's this little flag part one way and part the other. I stamped the right hand side, the flag portion. So he's holding it in his hand. In, on the right hand side and then stamp just the stick of the flag masking off the other part so the other guy could hold it and then drew in the other portion so I could have him holding his friend by the flag so he doesn't fly off into outer space because you know you can't have a little little guy who's flying off into outer space with nothing to tether him down because that could be very bad so I decided to make a rather silly moon man card out of it I debated whether to make them moon men in terms of like little green men or to make them people and I decided on people. So I'm going to use a couple different colors of skin tones here and the colors are in the numbers in the upper left hand side and remember if you're using a different brand of pencil you can still do this. So here I'm, I've grabbed a kind of really warm, warmish purple so it's a reddish purple kind of color. And then I'm going to use some blending solution. Here I'm using baby oil. You can also use some Gamsol or something with it. And if you've taken my color pencil jumpstart class, you'll know all about that because I've hope I hope that you've tried both, um, or at least you've tried one or the other in that class because it's a lot of fun to blend the colors that way. Now I noticed that my colors had gotten a little pinkish, so I just added a little glaze of yellow on top so that it would end up feeling a little more fleshly. And then I wanted more contrast because they're out in the in the light of the moon or the whatever out in the space and things. So I wanted some really interesting contrasty light. So I'm using a bluish purple pencil uh, for the sake of those who are trying with other brands. Find something more on the dark blue side. And then I'm just going to soften out a little bit of it and put just a tiny bit around the very edges and look how much it already makes them look like they're cascading into those helmets. They no longer look like they're flat on the surface. So now I've got a gray color. You can also use a bluish gray kind of color for the helmets themselves. And I'm putting my highlights in the upper right hand side of each of them. But notice it's going to be in a different place on the helmet that's at a different angle. So if you're going to do something crazy like mine, you're not going to have the exact same lighting on both helmets. So that'll be changing up when I get up to the other helmet. But I've also had a different uh, highlight on their faces as well, on their the glass in front of their face. And one of them has it just in the corner and the other has it kind of more along the whole side. Now here's something fun that you can use to make something look a little bit more like metal. I'm blending over top of this using a pretty good pressure, probably about a three or four. And if you've taken the Copic Jumpstart or the Colored Pencil Jumpstart class, you'll know that that's some relatively heavy pressure, not completely heavy. But when it's on top of a couple other colors, you don't have to go all the way to a five. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other one and put a little bit of black shadowing on top of it and then go over it with that white pencil and it gives it this more silverish kind of color. And it's hard to know always what a white is going to do on top of another color. So you might want to try it on some scratch paper and figure out exactly what it's going to do before you try this technique, but it often works nicely. And then I decided to add some little bit of fun in there by adding some hair so that we don't have little bald spacemen out there. So I put some ha hair on them and I'm going over some of the areas that lost their darkness when I put the white in there. So I'm just going to go over with a tiny little bit and if I need to do any blending I'll blend it with the gray 
so that I don't end up erasing it again. And now I'm going to add some kind of curly hair to this other guy and go around carefully that highlight spot. So some of his hair might show through the spot, but I want to keep that white highlight there and not, not totally covered over with hair. And then finish off his little body. And now that we've got their, their little boots and their little gloves and things. And once you've added the shading onto things like the face and the helmet, I'm not going to stress out about doing crazy shading on their their hands and their feet and their legs and things. Because once you get somebody's eye believing that there is some dimension there by some element of it being done really, really well, and I've, I haven't said this in a while, but focus on the big stuff. Focus on the important things and everybody's eye is going to fill in the rest. So if you end up just rocking your shading on certain portions. Make sure it's the portions you want to draw people's eye to and then let the rest be what it is. Since I live in America, and I know not all of you do, I decided to make a red, white, and blue theme on this card as well. So my little rocket is going to be all red, white, and blue. And I'm leaving a white highlight, a hard white highlight on that right hand side of the rocket because it's a shiny object. And when I try to blend things out a little softer, it's because things aren't super shiny objects, but when you've got something like a rocket ship, it's going to be definitely shiny. And that harsh highlight is going to really give that impression. So I'll go in with a little bit of gray. And I'm even going to leave a white circle around that window a little bit so that I end up getting some, uh, some dimensional looking there. My blending stump kind of touched my red a little bit, and I have a little further trouble with it as we go on with this, but I'm not stressing out about it. I'm just pretending that some of that red is just reflecting into the silver there. So there you go. But I did go scratch off the color on a, a piece of scratch paper, which you can do to clean off your blending stump just in the middle of a project. You can also use one of the sanding paper type of cleaners in order to, to clean off your blending stump entirely, but I usually only do that at the end of a project or something when I'm trying to start all clean with a brand new one. Now to make the moon itself, I made an arc for the whole moon and then I'm creating craters around it. And they're notice they're not circles, they're ovals because we're looking at it from the side. And then I'm going to add some shading. And since my light's coming from the right hand side, I'm going to add the shading to the left. But the little guy who's flying in the air he is going to have his shading way down below him, and that's what's going to indicate to your eye that he's really flying in the air. And the shadow from my, uh, my rocket ship is going to go around the curve of the Earth as well, so things are going to follow along that way. Now to make the craters look like they're dimensional, I'm adding shadows, this is going to be weird, on the right-hand side of the craters, because that's the part that's shaded by the sun, or from the sun. So it's the opposite of what your other shading would be because it's a recessed hole that you're trying to color in there. So I use a little bit more of my baby oil to do a little bit of blending, uh, just dipping in real quickly. And if you're interested in more on the baby oil blending and Gamsol and everything, the Color Pencil Jumpstart class is linked in the description so that you can find out more information about using your really cool, fun colored pencils. So after I had all that in there, I decided I wanted to add a little more strength to my shading here on my rocket ship because I wanted it to really pop. So I'm using a very, very light touch of black and then my blending stump to increase that shadow, leaving a little bounced highlight on the left hand side of that gray part on the, the rocket ship, which again adds to that metallic look and then increasing the strength of some of the shadows of my little moon men. So I debated whether to do something for the whole, um, the whole background and add, you know, a whole sky and everything, but that would take me hours. So I decided, no, I'm just doing the moon. And now I'm going to add a few white highlights back in that got lost along the way with a white pen. And then that will be all done. I popped it onto a card base, a red card base with some dimensional adhesive. And I always like to do that just to get a little bit more craftiness into it rather than just a colored picture. It makes it a little bit more special than just gluing it straight onto a card base sometimes. 
And there you go. All finished. I hope you will try this sometime. These moon men are fun to play with. And get your pencils out and your hex chart and pick some colors and go wild and color something. I hope you have a really good time doing so and I will see you in my next video. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.